In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at the components of group policy as well as how to configure settings in group policy. Group policy is a powerful tool that provides the administrator a lot of control over the computers and users in their organization. I will start by looking at the group policy nodes. Group policy is divided up into two parts or two nodes, the user node and the computer node. To have a better look at group policy, I will open a group policy object. To do this, I will first open Server Manager. From Server Manager, I will next select the Tools menu and then select Group Policy Management. I next need to find a group policy to edit. Let's expand down through Domains until I get to the container Group Policy Objects. This container has all the group policies that currently exist in the domain. In this case, I will select the group policy Default Domain Policy, right click and select the option Edit. Now that the group policy object is open, you can see the node for Computer Configuration and the one below it for User Configuration. If I expand User Configuration, notice the container Policies. If I expand Policies, there are three subnodes. These are Software Settings, Windows settings and administrative templates. Notice below this is Preferences. Preferences was originally developed by a third party company before it was acquired by Microsoft. It is now part of Windows and maintained by Microsoft. If it had been originally developed by Microsoft, most likely it would be under Policies with the others. If I expand Computer Configuration, you will notice that it has the same sub nodes as User Configuration. The names of the subnodes may be the same, but the settings you can configure for users and computers are different from each other. This is because a lot of settings would not make sense applying them at the computer level when they are designed for users and likewise for user settings. If I now select Software Settings, this subnode is responsible for installing software. Software that has been installed using Group Policy can be removed when it is no longer required. For example, if the user logged into a computer and needed some software, it could be installed for the user and then removed when they logged off. If software settings are configured under Computer Configuration, this software will be installed on the computer the group policy is applied to. The software is installed on the computer when the computer first starts up and before the user is able to log in. If software settings are configured under User Configuration, the software will be installed when the user logs in into the computer. The next subnode is Windows Settings. This contains a lot of the security settings for Windows. For example, user account policies and public key policies. It also contains scripts that run when the user logs in, logs off, the computer starts up or is shut down. Windows Settings also contain settings for application restrictions and folder redirection, plus some other settings. The next subnote is Administrative Templates. This subnote contains thousands of settings. These are registry based settings that are very good at configuring the user experience. For example, you could remove the recycle bin from the desktop, remove and add start menu items, or configure options in the control panel. There are a lot of different settings in Group Policy, but I will now have a look at one of the more common ones that you will encounter. To do this, I will open Administrative Templates, and then open the Container Control Panel, followed by Personalization. On the right-hand side are all the Group Policy settings that can be configured in this container. I will select the setting Prevent Changing Lock Screen Image. In the middle, you can see which operating systems the group policy applies to. It is important to check this before configuring group policy. In this case, the group policy requires Windows 2012, Windows 8, or Windows RT. If this group policy is applied to an earlier operating system, the group policy setting will simply be ignored. Below this, there is help information about what the group policy setting does. It is important to read this information. Often a group policy setting will also require other group policy settings to be configured. If these are not configured, the setting may not have any effect. If I select the option Standard, notice that the help information is hidden. 
This is useful to know when you are attempting to find a group policy setting as it gives you more room to see settings. I will now double click the setting Prevent Changing Lock Screen Image in order to configure it. Notice at the top there is information about the operating system this setting is supported on. Below this is the help information. This is the same information that was on the previous screen. You will find that the group policy settings under administrative templates will have the three options not configured, enabled, and disabled. The first option, not configured, is effectively ignored. If you configure a setting and no longer require it, select not configured. This will reverse the effect of configuring the setting in the first place. The next option, enabled, will, as it suggests, enable the setting, effectively switching it on. The last option, Disabled, will switch the setting off. It is important to know when to use these three settings as they are quite commonly used in administrative templates. Let's have a closer look at how they would be used. Group Policy supports rollback. So when you unconfigure a setting or remove the group policy, it will go back to its original setting. So if you have a group policy that is set to enabled, and you want to remove that setting, change the setting to Not Configured. The end result is the setting will not be configured and thus will be whatever the default setting is. In later videos, I will look at what happens when multiple group policies are applied in more detail. In this example, there are two group policies. The first is Enabled and the second is Disabled. If the second group policy was changed to Not Configured, Notice that the result is now changed to enabled. This is because the first group policy is still being applied. It is important to remember that when changing group policy settings, simply changing a group policy setting to not configured may not have the desired effect. Thanks for watching this video on IT Free Training, just one of the free videos in the group policy course. I hope to see you in other videos from us. Until next time, thanks for watching.